You know my favorite line, don't you? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to... There was a little joke right before we started, so I don't mean to be opening the, uh, the meeting with the uh, laugh, but uh, good evening. Today is January 14th, and uh, we ask everybody to please rise before we start our meeting. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, before we begin tonight's meeting, um, we would like to pass on condolences to uh, two uh, residents of the town that um, have passed, and uh, one being um, Lou Skerrick. I want to say that right, Dr. Lou Skerrick, who was ta was the town moderator for uh, many, many years. And uh, our condolences to to the family, and also to um, the Melidio family. And Bob Melidio um, passed suddenly. Also, a former FinCom member. And um, again, our condolences to, uh, to the families. Um, okay, official business. Uh, we'll get the minutes out of the way, and then we'll, looks we have a full house tonight, so we'll have everybody come up. Um, minutes for December 17th are in your packet. I would ask for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we um, approve December 17, 2012 minutes as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Mr. Chair, I, I move that we uh, approve the minutes of January 4th, 2013 as presented. Uh, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion and for uh, the public's uh, Mr. Chair. knowledge? This was a, um, this meeting was not on TV, so. <laughs> all right. Mr. Um, Fowler. Yeah, on page three of three, that the, the second sentence it, it states that it was Mr. Smith uh, um, there. I, I think that was myself again. I think it okay. should have been fifth. So if we could, perhaps. Yes. Am I correct on you're that? You're right. I, yep. You're perhaps right. Perhaps yep. if I we didn't make catch that, that correction. Yeah. Uh, do we need a motion to make that correction? Uh, I, I guess. Uh, well, we said as presented. As so if we just do a little line through it, correction. and follow. I think we're good as pre as presented. Yeah, I, just, uh, I thought I did ask that. I thought you had mentioned a topic and I asked that. Just I don't remember exactly, but well, I don't know I don't exactly don't how we get there. I, I I brought up the topic, um, which is fine. We can change. Yeah, I, I, so. We both we were talking about it, but I thought I did make the request to see if we could have her come in. Yeah, I know. I know we we. We Let's talk. We can. It, so it, it's not a big deal. We both were talking we, about we it. We talked it about deal. it, and it is on there. And, and I did follow up with. Cool. So do we want it to be? All right, leave it as or is. Or do we want no, to be? Leave it as is. As is. Okay. 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 All right. So we'll leave it as is with Smith. You got that, Mike? Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, police department. I guess we have a lot of business with you guys tonight, so we'll, we'll bring. Police Department up first. Good evening. How would you, uh, well, why don't we proceed if, if you allow me? We'll go with we have a night. We have a citizen award this evening sure. for uh, Josh Noonan. And what I'd like to do is uh, this, the information was sent to me from uh, to Lieutenant Donald Cudmore. I'd like him to read the um, the one I'm holding in my hand. The citation. Thanks, sir. And why we're here tonight. Mr. Chairman, good evening, board. Um, we were contacted uh, back in December by a uh, local resident concerning the actions of uh, one of our high school students. Uh, there was an incident that occurred on Friday, December 7th, uh, at approximately 2.45 p.m. There was a, uh, a substantial motor vehicle crash with personal injury on West Main Street, and it was identified that Josh Noonan, <coughs> excuse me, a 16-year-old sophomore who's a student at the Georgetown Middle High School, uh, went beyond... Uh, the call of duty that day. Uh, a witness uh, said that Josh had aided the injured victim in the crash, uh, who was in fact a teacher at the school as well. His actions included tending to her injuries, personally contacting her family, and calming uh, much chaos at the scene. Uh, Josh should be commended for his actions that day, and we should all hope that in a time of need, someone like Josh Noonan is there to help. Fantastic. Right. And based on that, we we have uh, presented, we have in my hands a certificate of uh, civic achievement from the Georgetown Police Department. 
I'll read it before we gave it to Josh. It'll be awarded to Josh Noonan for exemplary conduct and excellence and performance of civic responsibilities for unselfish devotion to his fellow man in the community which he serves, in the, whose actions have been such as to bring honor to himself and recognition. So Fantastic. Uh, we have that. Why don't we uh, turn you around here, buddy? I'm an old hand with some cakes. Oh, my God. You're going to smile. We didn't. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also have uh, Representative Mirai sees in the room, so if you want to take some pictures with our state representative, that'd be great too. So, <laughs> okay. All right. And I can actually say that. Welcome, Representative Mira. <laughs> Only now. There Here we go. There he is. <laughs> okay. we'll All right. Excellent All right. job. That's Excellent job. Great. All right. Let me move on here so we have it there. I think, in order to um, move along the board's agenda, We'll, we'll move on to the appointment of um, Christopher Pelusi for the uh, to the reserve position of reserve police sure. officer. I'd like to introduce Christopher. Christopher, could you come up here with us and we'll grab a seat? Chris, could you grab that seat over there? That's fine. Bring that one up. That's great, pal. Okay. Gentlemen, this is Christopher Pelusi. Hey, Chris. Uh, hey, Chris. Nice to meet you guys. I think before we leave here, you'll be impressed with his resume for such a young man. Okay. Christopher grew up in Boxton, Mass, and attended St. John's Preparatory High School in Dandridge, Mass. He furthered his education and attended, I'm going to ask you to say the name of this college. Yeah, Quinnipiac University. There, there you go. go. <laughs> we got it. That's why I'm not on radio. Uh, <laughs> it, which is in Hamden, Connecticut. He received a bachelor's degree in criminal justice with the determination to begin a law enforcement career. Shortly after graduating from that university, he attended Suffolk University in Boston and received his master's degree in criminal justice where he graduated with honors and was selected to be part of the National Criminal Justice Honor Society. Chris has worked for the Essex County Sheriff's Department as a corrections officer in the Middlesex House of Correction. In 2007, he was hired by the United States Border Patrol as a federal U.S. Border Patrol agent and was stationed in El Centro, California for just over two years. He was then hired by the Department of Homeland Security Transportation Security Administration as a Transportation Security Officer. He is currently with the Transportation Security Administration is working as a Behavior Detection Officer. He was hired as a, uh, as a reserve, office, uh, reserve Dispatcher with the Georgetown Police in April 2012 and he graduated from the Reserve Police Academy on December 15, 2012. Chris has recently moved to uh, Peabody with his fiance Jacqueline Lerner, who's in the room along with uh, Chris's mom and dad tonight. Also, as an aside, I wanted to. Chris earned a very prestigious award that was handed to him by uh, Governor Deval Patrick and, uh, and our Lieutenant Governor. Uh, and um, there's a little bit of the. the uh, he was uh, recognized as the first line of defense award. Chris Pelusi is is a behavior detection officer with the Transportation Security Administration and exhibited exemplary situational awareness when he discovered a prohibited item and then followed proper procedures by admitted, immediately notifying state police. Pelusi was also recognized for providing exceptional customer service for medical emergencies when he came across an individual in need of care as a result of a fall from an escalator. Pelusi gave comfort to the passenger until Massport a fire rescue around and provided medical assistance. Uh, that, that item we found was a weapon and, and a bag that actually ended up belonging to a federal agent, but uh, there was no way of knowing that at the time, so it was an excellent job, and he, that person not injured. As you know from past history, in order to get here, he had to pass a physical fitness exam, which you can see is pretty, he's pretty physically yeah. fit, and a, and a complete uh, background investigation. I can tell you in the time he's worked with us since April, he's dedicated himself to the proposition, getting himself certified as a uh, reserve <laughs> dispatcher. And uh, I've, been, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. He's the kind of young uh, uh, man and young officer that we 
we're trying to develop here in the uh, Georgetown Police Department. And I know I'm getting old when I see these young officers. Yeah, let's, yeah, the, the last recruiting class last, we were yeah. here. Looked oh. like science club from yeah. high school. Last <laughs> we thought they were pol yeah, from the science club. Oh, Poly science sci club. club you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. And political science clubs here, too. It's like, oh, boy. And, uh, yeah. so, we're all getting old, Chief. We're all getting old. Uh, I'm, I'm getting older yeah. than all of you. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'd like to do is I'd ask the board to um, uh, appoint Chris Pelusi is a reserve police officer with the Town of Georgetown Police Department. <coughs> really noted. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion to appoint Christopher S. Pelusi as a reserve police officer. Mr. Chair, I move that we um, appoint Christopher S. Pelusi as a reserve officer to the Georgetown Police Department. And to expire? With a uh, term expiring, is that June? June 30th. 30th, 2013. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Well, good luck. Well, <laughs> I'm sure this is going to go the, very uh, well. With permission, I'd like to go off um, something we don't normally do, but as folks are here tonight, uh, I usually do this in my office, and I won't go into the lecture I'll give you when I talk to you in my office. But um, <laughs> I'd like to present him. I know he's, the appointment becomes official when he signs his appointment slip, but I'd like to present you with your... Your police department, Dad. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? Okay. Chief, you jumped the gun a little I'm bit. I'm sorry. And I, and I don't, no I'm pun sorry. intended. I apologize. But, uh, <laughs> uh, all in favor? I'm sorry. Aye. 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 There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. That's great. Thank you very much. This is your official ID. This is your cap badge. Okay. Awesome. And you'll see me for the lecture. All right, great. Thank you, Chief. Congratulations. We're Thank really you, happy to have you aboard. Thank you very much. Good job. Congratulations. Pleasure to meet you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Great, sir. Congratulations. Town Administrator Mike Farrell. And we'll do this with uh, right. just like we did before. Snake I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's okay. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. I know you just oh. That's all right. I always look old in pictures. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, Chris, this is yours. Can I get some cover? Thank you, sir. And we'll see you work. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Protect and serve. Okay. I think if you, if again, with your indulgence, if we could ask to have Superintendent Carol Jacobs come up with and sit with us. See, those were the easy ones, Chief. Now comes the money ask. <laughs> okay. Good evening. I, good evening. I have prepared a statement. I don't statement. have my superintendent's uh, uniform on. Like said, I tell him I want a uniform. Carol, something tells me you carry a bigger stick than they do. <laughs> I want a uniform, though. I can assure you she does. She does. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a compliment. I'll take it. Yeah, no, yeah. I think it was a compliment. No, that's a compliment. Oh, thank you, David. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, well uh, today is uh, obviously the 14th of January, uh, 2013, and it's one month since the events that occurred in uh, Newtown, Connecticut. And, uh, and I've got a statement for the board. The Georgetown Police Department is deeply sad about what took place in Newtown, Connecticut. As you know, and as this board and our members are mothers, fathers, grandfathers, and grandmothers, we can't imagine what the parents who lost a child in this senseless act of violence are going through. They, along with the children and adults who survived this tragedy, are in our thoughts and prayers. This uh, tragedy undoubtedly and understandably will cause citizens throughout our community, the country, and the world to wonder about the safety of their children and the students in their communities. As police chief of the town of Georgetown, I'm here tonight with our superintendent of schools to address your concerns and to reassure the community that the Georgetown schools are safe and the Georgetown Police Department and the Georgetown schools are well positioned to protect the students. I'm confident that with the current practices and protocols that are in place, provide a safe and secure school environment for our children. With that said, there are always more things we can do to improve the safety of our children. <laughs> Sometimes we lose sight of what the initiatives of police and the school work on. Some of the things you should know we're doing, we're doing a daily random patrol assignments for our officers, mis miscellaneous visits to the school, memorandums of understanding with the attorney, uh, district attorney's office, school safety committee meetings, local drills and department trainings, and regional drills. 
Our primary focus is always on mitigation and prevention. On, uh, on a daily basis, the Georgetown officers assigned to day shift are assigned to random school patrol. These patrols require the officers to sign up the school, check at the front desk, and walk through the majority of the school facilities. Each day, officers are assigned to patrol specific schools selected at random. Selection of the schools and the patrol times are random, as is the assignment of specific officers in order to not create a, any discernible pattern. These patrols assure our officers are familiar with the layout of the schools and that the students and staff are comfortable with regularly seeing officers in the schools. And I have gotten positive feedback from our citizens since uh, we've started these initiatives. MOU, we have a, a memorandum of understanding in place between the Georgetown Police, Georgetown Schools, and the District Attorney's Office. Superintendent Jacobs and I both sat with the uh, DA in the past and signed this document, which requires a coordinated response to all violent, delinquent, or criminal acts by students. Whenever such incident occurs, police and school officials take a team approach to assure such incidents are swiftly and appropriately addressed with the safety of all students being paramount. School Safety Committee. The Georgetown Police Department also plays a role in the School Safety Committee, which also includes Georgetown Fire, Emergency Medical Services, and Emergency Management in several departments within the school, as well as um, Peter Durkee's department, the Highway Department. The Safety Committee meets on a monthly basis and discusses and plans for code blue drills and in any, any issue that impacts on school safety. Local drills and department training. The Georgetown Police Department has worked with the Massachusetts State Police to train each officer in active shooter program. These drills, as well as code blue drills, are done periodically throughout the school year. In-service department training is continually provided for all offices, including classroom instruction and hands-on practical exercises. Regional drills. The Georgetown Police Department is a member of ALERT, which stands for Area Law Enforcement Response Team. This team includes police departments from 18 surrounding communities, including Georgetown, Amesbury, Salisbury, Merrimack, Newburyport, <coughs> Newbury, West Newbury, Raleigh, and other local communities. In May of 2012, we conducted a mock drill in Georgetown for response time to the Pembroke School. All the listed departments participated in this drill. The purpose of the team is to render and receive police mutual aid in accordance with a signed agreement between each of the particip participating communities. This is why I'm here, school liaison officer. I am requesting that the Board of Selectmen approve a request to add one more level of protection to our schools. A daily school liaison officer. This officer would be assigned to, to daily to walk a patrol in each school building and parking lots to keep their eyes and ears open for any safety concerns that may be a security problem or turn into a security problem. This officer would have a direct link to the police department via communications and be equipped to handle any situation that might arise in the school from a medical emergency to an unwanted person in the schools. This officer would work with each school principal and administrator to exchange key information about security issues on a daily basis. The hope would be that this person or this position would be a stopgap for problems. Um, I can tell you, everybody talks about security and putting offices in schools. But it really, that's only one part of this position. When you have a police officer in school, historically, the, once the young people get to know him and trust him and, and get used to the presence of that male or female officer, there's a better likelihood that they'll be told what things that are going on, whether, it's a, uh, whether this child's a victim of a crime at home or whether it's, something's happening. And that's how we stop things. I, once something starts, I can only minimize it, or we can only minimize it. This is, this, I hope, would be that if information came to our attention, that we could actually take action to stop something from happening. So that's one of the remaining ingredients. And we know, uh, Superintendent Jacobs knows and I know from past history, we have stopped acts of violence from occurring because our uh, school resource officers retained intelligence that told us something was going to happen and we were able to intervene in that. In closing, I believe that with the additional school liaison office and the current practices and protocols that are in place, along with the outstanding collaboration we enjoy with our schools, provide a safe and secure school environment for our students. But I also really, really, really I, I say it again, <laughs> there's always more we can do to improve safety and uh, the commitment we have to our schools and the students is to protect them. I, I think the money part of this is important. I'm sure you're curious as to what it will cost. Uh, we looked at that. 
to fill this position, which would be five days a week during the school day, it would not work when the schools were closed. We wouldn't have them in when we didn't need them. Uh, hourly wage of one of our reserves offices is $16.21. Eight hour day is $129.68 per day. There are 99 active school days left in the school year. To, com to complete this project would cost $12,838. I'm well aware that the school, um, that this Board of Selectmen does do not approve these, the, right. doesn't issue the money. <clears throat> but I'm asking for your support with the Finance and Advisory Committee to fund this position. It's, you know, in the future it may end up, uh, we're all looking for grants. I read the, today that the government's looking at grants again mm -hmm. to do this. As you know, in the past we had a three-year grant. We had a police in the schools for four years. Three years of the grant, one year is us. So I think it's important. I think I'm coming to you in a timely fashion. We're one month away from one of the most unthinkable incidents. And it's, we, we can do all we want, but this position might be the one that stops something terrible from happening in our community. So that's why I'm here tonight. Chief, have you calculated what that would do if we, if, if we were to appropriate this money and go ahead with this? What would it be from a structural standpoint on your budget for next year? Uh, well, if we did the whole the whole year, right? Because right we, now, certainly, if we're going to do it now, we want to going to want to continue this program enough. going forward. So it would, it would double, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Yeah. I mean, there's 180 it's school days. It, that's what that's we're funded at. for yeah. 99 days. Okay. I mean, uh, last year, uh, with without a, a small uh, increase to the reserve officer hourly wage, mm -hmm. um, the superintendent as well as uh, <clears throat> um, uh, the police fire, we funded position probably about twelve, fourteen thousand dollars yeah, roughly. Fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah. If we if we if in and if if we did do fund it into the new year and if we did it this way it would be substantially less than if we hired an, a full time police officer. Right. I'm not supplementing the full time police force. This would not be the same person because we can't do that. That might be considered supplementary. But we, what we do is we'd assign a reserve officer as we went. The same person to handle. We, we would try to rotate. minimize it to a couple of people, but we can't do one person because. I understand. That would uh, that's a labor issue. Second question I have is not related to this, is that you have a structural issue in your budget f because the academies were canceled uh, or... Uh, no, sir, it didn't affect our plans. Okay, all right, so we weren't in... That academy we're in did track. Not, yeah. We're in track. All right, so, because I, because that, you had sent us a memo saying there was, there was some additional money there um, because of those, uh, you know, I guess rescheduling or some classes that were full or... We, 42,000 sticks in my head, but that no, was the only... No, you've, uh, you've, maybe you've, uh, I you've given us... That. We are, uh, will be appointing a full-time with my retirement <laughs> pending. Okay. We will be, uh, in March, we expect in, uh, to put an officer in the next academy in March. Okay. And we'll, that officer will be a full-time certified off or school officer. He he will be a student officer, is the word term. Honestly. And when I leave, when I about approximately the time I retire, he'll graduate so the police department will be at full... All right. Full-time compliment. Okay. So but there's no structural good. issue there in your budget for next year? We no. had no problem. No, there. Mr. Chairman, I believe you're probably thinking of the 22000 we came to you for the transfer right. with regard to the academy attendance. And then beginning in July 1st with the chief's retirement, that uh, that number goes away because of the uh, retirement of the chief and the addition of the Because I was officer. doubling it. I was taking the 22000 <clears throat> No, sir. Plus, okay. No, right. sir. So we, we were able to and we absorb do, that into our regular It keeps budget. the complement of officers at the department at 11 full-time officers, as it's always been. Okay. Um, so it hasn't always been. <laughs> since <laughs> December of 2009. Recent history. <laughs> since, since December <laughs> of 2009. Not that I think about that, but we... <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you was for on the reminder. I think I was on FinCon then. Anyway, um, so, so essentially we're looking at um, for the 14 budget, about a $26,000 line item, give and take, you know, a couple of hundred dollars. Okay. In addition to anything else that's contra we're contractually obligated to. Uh -huh. All right. I think the number in the previous years was we did it three days a week right. versus five. Okay. That was the reason and, and, for the 15000 versus the, 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 the 24 you And we'll now. be in very good shape at the, in the, uh, in, uh, towards the end of the school year to kind of report back to the board where we are mm -hmm. and to report to the Finance Advisory Committee and to uh, um, town manager, uh, I mean, town administrator, Farrell, where we are in this thing. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to come back with some pretty good information about how it's, if we get this uh, this uh, funding, how it's working out, anything that comes of it, we can come back and say, look, these are the good things we've, we've done in the school. Okay. 
So I would open it up for sure. questions. Sure. Uh, so Steve. would this person split their time between schools then? Is that basically... Yeah, the idea would be a random patrol of all the schools, but dedicated to the schools so that the principals, the, uh, mm -hmm. the administration would know who that... Who, there was an office in the schools, and, and that person would be... Uh, there'd be no issue. If a call came in, that person's going... We'll be, we'll be between one of the three schools. Okay. And so, Mike, maybe just procedurally... Uh, how does something like this happen? Is this a budget change? I mean, is this a town meeting change to a budget, or is this how does this work in terms of procedurally how this happens? Well, there's both. One, <laughs> one way to do it is through the reserve fund transfer. That, okay. Although we've been hitting it pretty hard, there's about forty-five thousand dollars left out of the about approximately ninety-six thousand. Uh, so for uh, almost $13,000, uh, there's enough money to pay for this for the rest of the year in the reserve fund. I don't believe we need a um, um, town meeting approval. We, you know, we, we budget for the full amount uh, coming in May uh, in this current budget cycle. So in the May town meeting, uh, assuming this were to move forward and we were wanted to continue it, the town would, uh, in essence, vote on that full-time position via voting on approving the whole budget, which would include it at that point. Yes. If I can, uh, okay. it's not a full-time position. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. It the, would be a part-time yeah, yeah, funded position. A new, a new position, I should say. Well, let, let me. And I, and I don't see in the need. Uh, this is not a quote new position. It's a it's a it's a reserve. Well, it's a reserve officer. Uh, so we're not creating a new position. We're we're creating a new body. Um, so I don't believe we need to go to the uh, personnel board with this. This is strictly a monetary issue and a budgetary issue, and the FinCom would have to fund it. So is FinCom the deciding body in this process, then? It would be my opinion they are, yes. Quick question on that. So this is a five, five days a week. Yes. Did you look at how effective a three-day, you know, cutting it down a little bit would We've be? We've done three days a week, but I would point to 9-11. Uh, there was a Marshall uh, program in, in place in 9-11, but they weren't on that plane. Mm -hmm. I don't want that hole in the boat. Okay. It, it, you know, the idea is to put somebody in there. Uh, these are times I don't even want to talk about what could happen and what's mm -hmm. going on in the, right. what we're hearing out in the world, but I would, that's why I'd like to get it into place. Well, the difference is $260. I mean, yeah. well, the logistics mm -hmm. of that, too, mm -hmm. David, where let's say we had an officer and he started looking into something, he was investigating something that was going on, and then he wasn't there the next day. Yep. It, it's just very hard for the continuity of the, mm -hmm. of, the, okay. of the process. All right, I'd open it up for other questions. Anybody have any uh, questions? Uh, uh, just, just a simple reserve officer is a part-time a, a position in the, in the department, is that? Yes, he's, uh, he or she is attended a uh, part-time academy. Yep. They're certified by that academy. They're brought into the police department. They, uh, they're trained in first responder, which is CPR. First aid, they're qualified with firearms, they issue tasers. So that officer, the way we treat them anyway, we don't treat them as reserve officers, although that's their title. Right. We do all the training, all the uh, work we do with these folks is they you would not you'd be hard pressed to tell a full time officer from a reserve officer. So they're highly trained people. As you saw this evening, we had that uh, Chris Pelusi in here and he's he's highly trained, he's federally trained and, and we and we've worked very hard with our reserve force to make sure they're the finest officers for this town. So I would have confidence in any reserve police officer. They ultimately will be, as openings occur in the Georgetown Police Department, the way we do business is we hire our reserve force. We don't go outside. The people <coughs> we bring aboard are the people we've mentored, and we know and we trust. So we know that they're the best officers we can provide to our community. So is a reserve officer draw benefits? No. Health insurance, none no, of that. So nothing. there's not a burden a, rate per se by salary, adding this. Very low salary, as you notice. Yeah, as on the hourly wage. It's very low, like you know. The only cost to the reserve force is um, annual training, mm -hmm. uh, a small clothing allowance, as well as additional funding for uh, qualifications and the like equipment that we need to use to keep them certified uh, as a uh, reserve intermittent police officer in the Commonwealth. So there is the, the, the cost is small in comparative to a, a full-time officer. Right. In Georgetown, we fill almost 100 shifts a month with reserve officers. Right. So right now we have a complement of about 15 reserve officers, which... Uh, in, in line with potential scheduling would 
uh, increase the police department by four full-time people. And that includes the fringe benefit package that Town Hall would have to supply retirement, health insurance, and all those mm -hmm. uh, products that come along with a full-time position. A reserve officer um, works less than 40 hours a week, so there's no scheduled overtime. The rate of pay, you can see, is 1621. Yeah. It's not necessarily a burden, and um, we would not be able to function without them. These are uh, citizen police officers. The majority of them have a full-time position somewhere else. They have a desire to serve. They have a desire. Most of them have a desire to become full-time officers. And we're working with some don't. Some are full-time firefighters in larger communities around the town. And they're not interested in, uh, in, in being full-time, but they're interested in being, doing law enforcement work. Mm -hmm. I think, too, if, if you have the police respond to your home in Georgetown, you will not know whether the officer that services you is a reserve or a full-time unless you ask them because uh, they have identical uh, training and certifications to remain on the job. Uh, the only difference with them is that they don't do it 40 hours a week. Okay. And you plan on paying for it out of your, the, the police budget, I mean, or is it a combination of the school and police, or I, I, you know, what are we thinking? I, from my point of view, we've done that in the past, and frankly, it's our budget, it's our officer. He or she reports directly up the chain of command at the police department. I feel like it's a police function. It ought to be in our budget. We've kind of, uh, you know, we, we've done what we could. Uh, Superintendent Jacobs has been great right. helping us in the past. But honestly, this is a police. This is my budget. It should come out of the police department budget. It's, it's uh, short money for what we're talking about at this point. So I feel like where a person reports to us, <coughs> strained by us, comes under our, uh, our policies, procedures, rules, and regulations, standard of conduct, that they, we ought to pay them too. That ought to come out of our budget as well. Okay. So looking forward to 14, would you bring to FinCom a recommendation that this become a full-time position, or would you would continue I'd like to fund to it through well. uh, <laughs> fund it through the um, reserve? Because you can't. You, well, I, I shouldn't say you can't. My question beyond that, there's two questions. A, how are you going to handle it in 14? Mm -hmm. Second question is. Is it is it going to be the same person, or are you going to rotate a couple of people through? Because we'll if it's the same person, it almost feels like a permanent. We will position. have to rotate yeah, yeah. because of the union, this, yeah, because of union, union concerns. We'll have to we'll have to uh, rotate people before our unions have been excellent, yeah, great. and they haven't uh, made any issues of this. But I don't. I know if I go five days a week with the same person, that is an issue. It's, it's supplementing them, and we add down a full time officer. And to answer your question, this is the temporary. We're going to sit down. We will come. Uh, we've already submitted a, a good part of our budget to uh, Mr. Farrell, and we will be. This is something for consideration among us. We'll sit down and talk about it. We are. We have lost a member in 2008. We uh, had a layoff, and we have never replaced that person. The town has grown by 20 percent since uh, 2000, and we're at the same manpower level since 2000. So, uh, you know, I, my feeling is we need to get that body back. You know, and. Uh, uh, and in the board, you know, uh, so that's my feeling. But I think right now this is, we tried to put something together fast, something we could do fast, something that was within a reasonable amount that I could go to my board and ask for your support and then go to the Finance Advisory Committee with your support. Because I think that's key in getting this done. Without the board's support, uh, there's no reason for the Finance Advisory Committee to say yes. Okay. You know, and I'm hoping that your support gets us over that hump. I can tell you, too, because we've had three different officers over the years through the schools. And, they, and what they've done is they've taken a potential, like an issue that could be a problem, and they've handled it inside the school before it becomes a problem. And now, right. and now at this point, it, we, and I, now at this point, we just get it when it's a problem. So, not, and uh, I'll tell you, they took the uh, call volume and brought it way down with a lia liaison officer or a school resource officer in there. It's, they've been a great help, and they're inside the schools. And as, as, uh, as Superintendent Jacobs said, you know, when, when that, super, that principal has to deal with somebody, it's so much easier that they don't have to tell the same the thing over and over again. If we break this down, to, let's say we find two offices we can cover this with, because that would be within the scope of uh, what's, if we could, then there'd only two people to deal with. And they, and they would communicate with each other, and they would back up each other and follow up each other's work. So th there's a lot of good that happens there. You know, two groups in our community, seniors and kids, those are the two at highest risk for all sorts of reasons. And we're doing pretty good with our senior citizens. I'd like to apply this to our kids, at least in the schools. Steve, sure. Uh, so uh, first off, just uh, I know you have all reviewed the safety procedures at the schools, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not so much made changes, but just uh, did some reminders and some changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so first of all, it's, as a parent, it's appreciated 
you know, it might take a little longer to go bring the big backpack my daughter forgot, mm -hmm. but it's much appreciated mm -hmm. that I get signed in and I get a badge and all that stuff. So first of all, thank you for that. Um, and secondly, uh, Mr. Chair, I would say that I think um, this makes sense primarily for two reasons for me is one is ultimately the town will decide in May whether this is something we're going to do going forward, which I think is really an important principle of how we operate and it's up to the, t uh, the town meetings to do that. Um, and secondly, given that we do, we have had some uh, extraordinary uh, and tragic events lately that this is a reasonable measure to take uh, versus uh, an overreaction. Uh, and it's a short-term reasonable measure to take for some additional security and even additional peace of mind for uh, the parents and residents. Um, and again, it's short-term, and then in May, the town decides if it's something that they want to uh, pursue on a regular basis. Yeah. Any other questions for our police department? I, I guess I would say on procedure, then from one of them here and Steve say, this would be a separate line item in May for an additional, because I thought that it was going to be absorbed in the, in the budget. Well, if I may, Mr. Oh, Chairman, so let's uh, clear this up, please. Uh, I think that um, budgets were uh, due on the first week in January, and a level services budget, somewhat of a hybrid budget relative to information, was given to the town administrator. And then during the uh, budget process, now that this has come to light, it will be an additional topic to add to the police department's salary line item at that time. We need to vet out whether the position's viable at this board, at the finance committee level, and whether uh, the five days a week will be palatable. And then we'll submit that supplemental number to the police department salary line item. It will not be a separate line item. It will be in the police department salary line item. The and same. then that goes out of the level services budget that we submitted to the town administrator, but that will be vetted out at that budget process right. in and February. And so that this should be a $25,000 difference, Delta, uh, plus or minus, uh, of your budget. We'll have an proposed, exact figure, yes, sir. Bay, yes. Um, that the town could then decide on supporting or amending, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. FinCom first decides to support, uh, mm -hmm. along with the, the, this board, so. It could be funded through the reserve piece, or it could be a permanent full-time position. That's correct. Yeah, you that, would be, to, that would be, uh, and, and there may be two right. propositions brought forward. Right, you know, right. well, so, that's the point. And that's, you know, where the, that's where, that's up to FinCom at that point. Mm -hmm to bring that forward and then if uh, the town's people to vote on it. So does that answer the question, Gary? They can go either way with this. They haven't really decided. The uh, most, inexp most inexpensive way to do it would be through the reserve piece, which That's is about 26000 this way. So we would just be doing a stopgap and let them decide with FinCom if FinCom's going to support it or not after for the 14 budget. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a transfer for FY13. I understand. And then the, yep. the, uh, the budget vetting and... February will determine FY14. Yep. But our budget has been submitted pursuant to the town administrator's instructions you just have for January. To really get that in as a change. That's correct. So, Gary, well, if I get, I'm more the guy that believes in living within your budget, and the budget, the town budget, can only go up a certain amount each year unless we have overrides. Overrides burden people. I believe that you're doing a fine job. You stated all the things you're doing, and, and I, I've, I've gone over police budget in the past, and, I, and even though you may be at the same level of officers, I believe your budget has had the opportunity to go up more than other budgets in town, other than perhaps with the recent override for the schools. And I feel that if we add to your budget, it's going to end up taking away from somebody else's budget. That would be my fear, and, and so I'd rather see it go through the regular budget process that FinCom does. That's that's my feeling on it. Okay. For FY14, Gary, here. or for this year? I'd rather not make a move a move now. Also, I, I believe in, in your presentation, you mentioned about your thought that might be some possible grants coming from the state, and I would wonder if we did put somebody in there, could this affect uh, applying for a grant if you already had a position somewhat staffed also if well, I'll be frank with you we we have applied for a federal grant every year since we lost the last one and unfortunately uh, well-to-do communities like Georgetown fly under the radar and Lawrence's the Lowell's the Haverhill's they get this stuff we don't get it we're not even considered 
And, it, and it's been that way, and I can tell you. That's true for uh, all well, I apply for the yeah. grants. I've applied yeah. for yeah. My heart sinks every uh, time for I get federal the rejection grants. letter. Yeah. So, so well, we don't. And, but, and, and I'll continue to apply for They are for talking them. about grants, and we, can, we, we go for every grant that's out there. If there's a grant and we think we can get it, we go for it. So, so I, what, I, what I would support, and it's just me personally, would be to fund this for this interim time. Let's see what the effectiveness, you know, effectiveness is, and then we'll talk about it when we get to the budget piece, whether that's going to be a structural issue or not um, going forward. So I would be willing to fund it up until, you know, just for this appropriation and then see what the effectiveness is, come back, report to us and FinCom when we have those discussions um, and see how that's going. Although we may not have enough time to evaluate because right. budgets are done, you know, uh, well, the final budget would be voted on in May, so we may have a good idea then how effective the program has gone. So mm -hmm. I'd be willing to give it a you know a, a shot to uh, try this and then see how effective it is and, and get a, a feedback and then then let the people decide and um, you know more on the side of Steve's camp. This is reserve money. Reserves are there for issues. It's within our budget because it is appropriated. Um, I just don't want to create a structural issue going forward, and that's where. I think um, would address some of Gary's concerns about living within our means and, you know, making sure that the program is effective and it's something that we want. So, um, again, by appropriating or suggesting or supporting a $12,838 appropriation, we're still living within our means of our budget because $96,000, I, I want to stick to my mind, how much was in the uh, reserve when we first started? Yeah, 90, $96,000. Yeah, so we had $96,000. So it's been budgeted. It's within our budget for these types of issues that we want to address uh, during, you know, if something comes up. So for me, we're staying within our budget now. We'll address that when we get to the 14 budget going forward. So that's why I would support this. So any other questions for the, uh, for the group? Okay. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that we um, approve this or take a vote on this. I that we support. How's to that? To support it and send it up to the FinCom. And uh, have the VINCOM vet it and uh, vote on it and um, see if we can get our board to support this. Okay. <laughs> I'll second that very long motion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so I understand the motion. Let me repeat it. And you yeah. can, the motion is that we uh, a support a reserve fund transfer of $12,838 to the police budget for the purposes of funding a school resource officer. Is that what school you said? Liaison. Liaison. Yeah. School liaison. School liaison. That's the difference. Is that, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. okay. okay. That's, Perfect. That's what, that's what I okay. said. That's what I said. Thank All you. right, so we got a Thank second. You, <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Again, I will say I'll support it to here, to fund it here, but then it becomes living within our means going forward because this, again, reserve money is part of our budget and has been voted and living within our means and we're going to use a piece of it for something extraordinary like this that's come forward. Um, so that's why, again, I'm supporting it. So all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. Motion carries. All right. So, but that's not a guarantee that you're going to get it. I mean, it's yeah, uh, now that. in the hands of FinCom, and I'm sure they will certainly go through it and, and um, come up with the uh, decision they feel is the best um, decision. So before we leave, we have one more item. Okay. <laughs> I kind of loaded the agenda this tonight. So. Can you pass those around, please? Can I <coughs> Mr. Chairman, um, I'm going to talk tonight about the uh, the crossing guard uh, positions oh, as we move towards the um, fiscal year 2014 uh, budget discussions as well uh, and, and discuss manpower and funding. Uh, as you know, in uh, 2013, <laughs> for FY 2013, the budget currently is is budgeted for $6,796 for two paid positions for the Crossing Guard program, one which is stationed at uh, Burley and one which is stationed at Pembroke. We have one volunteer for the high school. Uh, I've given you a list of the posts which are reviewed every, we every year by myself concerning uh, school population and the like, and we have tried shifting uh, Crossing Guards around, but ultimately uh, we bring them back to the... Uh, uh, to home camp in front of the schools because we can't fund those other positions. But um, I got a letter from one of the current guards uh, that uh, he needs a 44-day uh, a uh, leave of absence to, to handle some personal matters, uh, which I granted to him. And not being able to fill the position, uh, we went to the Council on Aging for some advertising and uh, we visited Trestleway and lo and behold, we did have someone come forward 
who would actually do that temporary position and showed interest in actually staying on. Um, so my uh, plan would be is to uh, permanently uh, keep him after the April 8th time when the other guard comes back. Uh, that uh, cr uh, requires a need of uh, $1,115 to keep that person for that third position. Just to give you a historical perspective of the crossing guard program, I pulled some old records out uh, as, as, as long as 20 years ago. And back then, the crossing guard budget was $11,000, and we had eight crossing guards in all eight positions uh, on a regular basis. The posts that were eventually eliminated was Georgetown <coughs> Center, Prospect in West Main, Pembroke Ave in East Main, the building supply parking lot in East Main Crossing, Library and Central Street Crossing, and Central Street and Elm Street. Um, we did create a new position, if you recall, uh, at the board's request uh, last year for the uh, Canterbury Drive Andover Street crossing, which is extremely dangerous as well. Uh, that was temporarily filled. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're uh, hoping to uh, create temporary positions through the uh, Senior Citizens Property Tax Incentive Program with the Council on Aging. Uh, for 62 hours, they get a credit through that office. Uh, so I contacted Colleen today to see if she could split a couple of positions and maybe we could take some of these positions and utilize it in that volunteer basis, but have them folks participate in that, uh, in that particular program. Uh, the person who's come forward to fill in the, for the leave of absence uh, has an interest in staying. So after that April 8th date, I was hoping that I could provide him that position until the end of the school year, and that's the reason for the $1,115 request. It's a, verify that amount again? $1,115. It's an hour a day. I'm sorry, two hours a day, an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon at a post. And the hourly pay for a crossing guard is $10.72 currently okay. for FY13. Because our, our agenda item says $1,500. So no, I, I saw that. Um, I think that with the timing issue, this was pushed off. You know, so every day that we don't do something, we save money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so uh, again, I'll, I'll put this uh, from a structural perspective. Again, mm -hmm. there's uh, there's not an extra eleven hundred and fifty, uh, you know, eleven hundred and fifteen dollars, whatever it is, uh, in the budget now to handle this anywhere. I mean, no, the crossing guard line item. Um, it's on the police, is, right? Yes, it is. It's a separate line item. It's not in the police budget. Uh, it's one of our line night. Uh, nine line items that, that we uh, manage, and um, it's if it's used, it's used. If it's not, it's given back. It's, right. it's strictly so, for crossing so guys with sick calls and the like. If someone right. calls in sick, uh, we try to fill it with an on-duty police officer, mm -hmm. um, and then that money is not expended. And I've had to come back before because two years ago I changed both guard positions, and we had a lot of sick calls with some previous guards. In the last two years, these guys are there every single time. So I need to increase that. And the weather's been good too. Yeah, you know they just, <laughs> which is good. They don't call in sick. So, um, uh, and, and then then on a, a final note, with regard to the plan you have in front of you, there's also a position that the school funds <coughs> in front of Winter Street and Maple Street. That's a crossing guard position that the superintendent's office uh, has filled over there. So that's also included in that post plan that you have. So to come back is going to be. Oh, the question is going to be because I'm. I know mm -hmm. constituents are going to ask me is. We passed a $1.2 million override for the schools, and we can't find $1,115 to fund a crossing guard. So I put that on you, Carol. Is well, I think the, the, the discussion we had was that it belongs in the police budget. It's a right. public safety matter. Right. Um, and the reason I fund the... Well, it's all line item, I think. It's all line item. The reason I fund the one I fund is because it's actually physically on school grounds. I understand. So, so that's a very dangerous area in the morning. So there's no way, and, and again, from a structural perspective or a, a, a procedural perspective, where we could do a line item transfer from the school budget to the police budget for $1,115, Mike? Or is that, I mean, do we need an act of Congress to do that? Or is Pretty that, much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Because that's the questions we're going to get from the public, is that mm -hmm. we're spending all this money and we can't find another $1,100 uh, for, for a school crossing guard uh, to fill in. So... Um, I, I don't run up to the board. Any, any questions uh, for our esteemed group? I would probably have the same vote as the last one. It's, 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 it's not easy, you know, but I, as I say, I believe in, in working these, these things out the way they're supposed to be worked out through the budgetary process. And we've, we've dipped on different things 
in the free cash and reserve, as Mike said, we've dipped into it a bit already. And um, if we keep going, I just don't see it. I mean, the only thing I'd point out to the board is this is the first time in years that we have had anyone interested in taking this position. We have a gentleman out there right now that is a volunteer. And he doesn't even have to show up. He's a volunteer. He's a retired gentleman. He comes as a goodwill, you know, and lieutenant's taking out to lunch. I bought him gift certificates to say thank you. But, uh, you know, we got somebody. We finally got somebody on the line, and it's a 1000 bucks. We didn't create the situation. We kind of, everybody, this has been a hot potato. Everyone wanted to get rid of it and ended up on the police department side of things, you know. And I'm not saying Carol. I'm saying in the past. We went down from 11 of these people now, and we're talking again about the safety and security of our kids. And if you and if you think about the job, ten dollars an hour, and you have to be there in the morning, and you have to be there in, in the weather. afternoon. It messes up your entire day, and it doesn't matter what you know, all the bad weather and all those things. So, like I said, this is a position of safety and security. We didn't create the uh, wheel. We just we're stuck with the wheel. So. We're asking for that money to, again, we're going back, we're going to the finance <laughs> committee with this and we're going to be asking them to to support this and maybe in the, maybe we should look at how we fund these positions in the future. Well, know? I think it, it, it's yeah. also, even having a, th was it a third or a fourth? You know, we, we maybe need, we need eight. So this is just a well, it's small really, band-aid. We probably do. So the, maybe, the, we, yeah. we, maybe we come up with a better plan than just yeah. adding... One more person, you know. It'd be I go, tough. Very I tough. know it's hard to find yeah. people to do it. I, I agree. It's hard to find people. We had researched. And we actually collected sorry, data. We actually collected oh, sure. data on the number of, of students who crossed for a number of months in a row to try to identify where are those places <clears throat> mm -hmm. that we really need them. Right. And so we attempted to hire. Uh, we, we we did attempt to see how other communities handle crossing guards, mm -hmm. and and some have the uh, crossing guards under the purview of the police, some have them under the school district, some com uh, actually hire a private company where they mm -hmm. uh, pay per location, and uh, the, the, the folks, the equipment, the training and the like are provided by this private company, and they handle the crossing guard uh, situation in those communities. We did price that out, um, more expensive. cost prohibitive for Georgetown, yeah. but, um, but so, so there's no way we can there's no way we can do this um, through the school budget, Carol. What, David? This, this a lot, yeah. Is there a this kid? Is the first I've actually heard of it. So. Well, I mean, again, because of the, there may be a little more room in, in your budget to maybe hire somebody, you know, to, to cover this one crossing area for the for the remainder of the school year at that $1,115. Is there any way that you could do it without having to do, bring it through the line item transfer and increase the budget? Well, well, there there isn't a, we don't have such a line in our budget. Right. Where the school committee would probably have to go for something like that is school choice. And and we've talked about the structural deficit. You know, is there a thousand dollars? There might be. Um, but it's you know, it is you know, we as we've talked about that at, at length. Mm -hmm. Um that's where we would have to go if we were to to do this. Right. And I don't think that's a bad idea just to get through here and then come up and really come up with a plan that takes us into 14, to be honest with you. Again, that's my, my feeling. But I'll open it up for questions, it's, Steve. Uh, this topic drives me nuts because we've gone through through the years. 25% of our population pass these people every day if you look at parents and school buses. Mm -hmm. It is the highest impact on safety to cost ratio we have to have in the town. Mm -hmm. You guys do a great job. Mm -hmm. But these people see 25% of the population mm -hmm. every single day. Right. This is... This is, every dollar is important, but this is small money for the amount of safety you get for the population of the children and all the parents and all the out-of-towners that are going by and all the other population that goes by. And, and Mr. Smith, if I may too, um, we as the police department, we as parents, uh, you know, I, we think about it every day. Uh, I responded to the call where somebody was hitting a crosswalk and severely damaged. Um, Every morning, you think that once that school bell rings, everybody's arrived safely. Um, you know, it, it, it is a concern, and you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And um, I know uh, funding's tight, and I know that, uh, um, you know, we all do what we can, but that's why we bring it before the board, as, as Mr. Fowler said. It's up to the taxpayer. Right, and, and, and I do agree. We'll go back to, you know, Mr. Chairman, what you said about if we're going to make some budget changes and structural changes, 
that's where the town comes into play and that's the process we follow. We do create a reserve <coughs> for a reason. So $1,115 of safety seems like a ridiculous conversation to have here. We have the reserves. It's, it's, a, it's not an issue for the reserve money. It's where we should be spending our reserves. It just, it makes sense. And again, I, I, I do respect trying to keep fiscal responsibility. This is being fiscally responsible. $1,115 out of our reserve to ensure that we close the cl cl crossing guard gap and and keep everybody safe. And again, it goes beyond the school kids. There's 25% of Georgetown goes by these people every day. Mr. Yeah. Fowler, in, in reply to that, I would say it seems that this has been budgeted in the past, correct? As yes, it has. It's been reduced. Have. And it's 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 been reduced. And as you say, it, it is Perhaps it wasn't the place to get reduced, but it got reduced because someone saw the need to reduce it. The need could have been because we put on another teacher or we put on another officer or a half an officer or maybe the highway department was here or the fire department. So that doesn't fall on us. I mean, this is a procedure that we go through. And I, and I do agree that it's, it's a shame that the excellent point, the residents that are walking by in that. So it needs, it needs to get looked at in the correct way, I believe, mm -hmm. and not in this fix it here and now way. So I would send it to the budgetary process. Uh, that's what I would be supportive of. Um, get it fixed I, the right, the correct way. And I agree 100 percent. That's what the town meeting is. But it's also the correct way to take. We created this reserve to fix it now, not this. <coughs> Just the, that reserve that we have is to fix things now. That's why it was created. So that's why I'm proposing it. This is a make sense to fix it now. It is following our procedure. It is following our process. It is using a reserve fund that we had put aside to make, you know, it will be FinCom, not us again, correct? Right. This is all Allowing right, right. FinCom to make these decisions. It, the reserve is a fix it now budget. So it is within our purview to fix things now. That's why it's there. And the question is, is this a good use of the fix it now money? And I'm advocating that, yes, it is. It's it's And again, we're fix it now for a short amount of money, and then in May, a new proposal can come forward for a crossing guard structure that the town can vote on. All right, well, let's move to questions. So let's uh, get to a, a motion here, and then we'll have some further discussion if we need to. So anybody want to make a motion? Let's get to it. Anybody? Uh, I move to um, recommend. Is that the term we're using? Yes, good. I move to recommend. Just let my place. Um, to FinCom to transfer $1,115 to the crossing guard line item. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. <coughs> Any further discussion? I think we've, although I don't want to stifle discussion, but I think we've beat this, no, beat I, this I, enough. I, I just want to second Gary's <laughs> points about how the budget process should go. I, I fully agree with I agree with 100%. I think this is within our purview to make a decision, but I, I completely support that uh, your process where the town makes the decision is right on. I'm with you. I just think we have a process to handle these things this way as well. To that, I would say I, I don't want to put the burden back on the townspeople. Generally, the townspeople vote on the budgets that get presented to them. And it got taken, it probably got taken out of what the townspeople got to vote on in the past. And it was probably either the police department or the school department that reduced it in their budget. Agreed? Just right. okay. I'm with you. All right, so um, personally, I am not going to vote in favor of this, just to let you know. I would re proceed, uh, prefer to see it come out of school choice. Let's find out if it's an urgent, that urgent to be done. Let's see if we can find $1,100 $1, out of our school budget. So, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay. So we've got that. The motion does not carry. All right. Anything else? Yes, sir. If, 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 uh, if you may uh, at least consider appointing uh, Mr. Larry right. Mintz okay. uh, to the position of crossing guard so that I may fill the vacancy uh, that is going to incur, uh, occur when, uh, when our other crossing guard takes that extended leave, and then at least he'll be appointed. Um, he'll begin to work. Uh, let me give you the exact dates because I do not want uh, any confusion. He will begin on January 29th and end on April 5th. Great. 
Well, we're so going to point them through June 30th, June 30th anyway. So. You are? Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Just just so you have a backup person, just in case. All right. So why don't we get this? Uh, this will complete this whole section. Um, so anybody want to take a stab at nominating? Still? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I move that we <coughs> appoint Lawrence Mintz as a crossing guard term to expire June 30th, 2013. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Thank, thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. Okay, yeah. thank you, everybody. On behalf of the police night. department, thank you all for your Thanks support again. and for your time tonight. Thank, really you. Appreciate thank you for your hard work. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Carol, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so um, I see that. Yeah. So. So I hate, we have represented, uh, representation from the fire department here tonight. Um, I know there was a call, of, <laughs> a tone went out, so who's left? Anybody left in the room? No. Come on up. And I also would like to... Um, All right, come forward, please. And I would like, like to welcome Senator Tarr here to our uh, to our meeting. Also, Representative Mira, come to uh, to our meeting. Um, we're here to honor Chris Conway and Scott Silva for um, completing the firefighter recruit recruitment fire training. So, congratulations, gentlemen. Unfortunately, Chris is not here. Is he on a call? Yeah, I think he might be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we heard the tone go out a little while ago. So, well, congratulations on Thank behalf you. of the board and the town. Yeah, great job. Um, Again, hopefully we can, you know, the call will be over and things will be taken care of and I'll come back and uh, be able to uh, accept this citation. So I, I hear we have a citation from, from both our uh, esteemed representatives. Uh, we do indeed, legislature. Mr. Chairman, and, and through you to the board, it's nice to be uh, back with you in the it's first part of 2013 nice to, to wish you a happy new year and say that uh, we look forward to working with you in the uh, kind of productive relationship that we've always had uh, over the years. And I know that I join you in welcoming our new state representative uh, who's you. hit the ground running oh, yeah. uh, on, on a, number of, a number of issues. And uh, I know that he'll be a good working partner with all of us. And it's wonderful that we get to come uh, in our first act of official business to be able to recognize uh, two outstanding uh, members of the community who have chosen uh, to make the sacrifice, to be members of the fire department, and to do something that we don't always think about or see, and that is the time and the sacrifice of training. We oftentimes see these folks in action and we think that you know that is their role, and of course it is, but we don't think about the long hours and the, the personal sacrifice that it takes to get to the point where they can effectively respond to emergency situations. And so when someone makes it through uh, the Firefighting Academy in Massachusetts, which is run by an outstanding group of people led by our fire marshal, Steve Cohn, uh, it is a moment to uh, take note of and to commemorate. So we thought it would be appropriate to congratulate uh, these graduates and to say thank you to them, uh, Mr. Chairman, for undertaking uh, that challenge and that responsibility and for spending the time that it takes so that when we know or when we see them at a scene, uh, we know they're delivering the very best uh, public safety protection possible. And that's what the Academy represents and that's what these two graduates represent. So it's a real pleasure for, for Representative Mira and I to come and uh, offer these citations in recognition of that accomplishment and uh, just to, to really say thank you uh, for taking up the challenge and for working to protect us every day and for doing it in a very professional and highly trained and highly skilled way. It's really a great thing for all of us, and it's a great example for others to follow as well. And uh, while we're here, I just think uh, we would also say a word of thanks to the chief and the department and all of the other members of the department for creating uh, a great team and a great sense of commitment to public safety and a great environment that it inspires others to want to join the department and to become trained. Thank so, you. so with that, uh, Representative, do you want to offer any thoughts here? Is, uh, no, it's a great example of our system working well, and uh, this is a great example of what we get, you know, with diligence, hard work, and congratulations. Thank you. Well deserved. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right, so the uh, 
Representative, you can hold that one. All right. If any, um, I, I get the sense there's a photo op, Scott, in the wind here, so we'll try to figure out the staging of this. I know the camera's behind us, so we'll figure that out. But uh, and, and I want to mention um, that I have actually been through some of the evolutions of training at the academy myself, and I know how challenging some yeah. of them can be. Uh, when you're in that burn building and everything closes up and the fire starts, uh, it's a very interesting situation. Uh, some of my colleagues, I think, were trying to padlock the doors while I was there. <laughs> but, uh, at any rate, uh, these, uh, these citations are from uh, the representative and myself. These happen to be the Senate versions, but he will also have for you House of versions. Uh, but this reads, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Scott Silva in recognition of your graduation from the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. Again, these are the Senate version and Representative Mira will be following uh, with the House version. Uh, but these are signed by our Senate President, Therese Murray. They're attested to by our Clerk, William F. Welch. I am proud to offer them as your state senator. And uh, they're actually dated for when the original graduation was, which unfortunately I was unable to be to, uh, which is why uh, we wanted to come and present these in person. So they're dated on December 20th of 2012. And uh, Scott, this one is for you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you again. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Chairman, uh, and he, when Senator Tarr refers to the number of hours, 360 hours of okay. training is what these uh, these folks go through. Was it two, uh, Monday nights, Wednesday, Wednesday nights, Saturdays. all day Saturday, <laughs> yeah. sometimes yeah. even on Sunday. You know. well. <laughs> was a, a lot of it started in 95 degree temperatures and ended when it was about. Uh, 20. Yeah, 20 and snowing. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, congratulations on behalf of the town. We're, we're that much safer, <laughs> okay, right. Thank you. with both of you guys. And, and again, it's a testament to the job that uh, Chris is not here, so. <laughs> so uh, Mr. Chairman, though, with, with your indulgence, could we actually uh, have Representative Mira perhaps read that one oh, into the record? Sure. So that absolutely, folks sure, absolutely. Sure. Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations <laughs> to Christopher Conway in recognition of your graduation from the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy and be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the presidents of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk of the Senate. Mr. Chris Conley. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. trust, Chief, that perhaps you can get that to, to certainly do that. Okay. Right. Mr. You Chairman, would you like photo? to stage a greater photo sure, opportunity? Sure, why don't we, uh, with, uh, yeah, with the we, board? Uh, we want to get a better... Uh, Get everybody in. Fight a pop and everybody. <laughs> everybody. Get a Thank you. 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 Thank we have the wide angle lens Come on and jump up, guys. You're a little shorter than me. What's that supposed to be? How's that? Uh, I've never used this camera before. Oh, you got to uh, 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 get closer. <laughs> you got to so get in, guys. Move in. Turn sideways. Yep, yeah, turn sideways. Yeah, turn, everybody turn sideways and get in. You know, that someone wanted earlier, you know. All right, wait a minute. You're going to make sure you do this right. Stu, you got to move. Are you guys closer? <laughs> turn sideways. Turn toward the center. See, someone takes right. charge. All right. Here we go. Scott, you get in the center right there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Don't worry about him. You hold it that way. Yeah. All right. Every, no, you guys all turn to the side as well. That's, no, go the other way. There you go. Other side. All right. Now, I can't see you, so you got to go that way a little bit. All right. Here's another one. That's, that's, the, that's the official department camera. <laughs> we may need that there we one. Go. Oh, we got all right. Is that better? Are you Republican or Democrat? <laughs> all I'm going to say is I got the job done, so that should tell you which party you are. That's because you're a politician. Are we good? The ellipses. <laughs> Good thing it's not a rifle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's closed. Turn it off, Mike. <laughs> oh, there's nothing on the. Keep All right. <laughs> nothing on the screen here. Technology. Try it. Don't worry, I'm impressed with that. Lens covers busy. on. No lens covered. 
<laughs> Gary, you look like you're in a high school graduation mm. picture. <laughs> With the white hair, yeah. There you go. Well, it took a while. It's okay. All right. I hope. Now, where is the guy that owns this thing? There we go. Yeah, it sounded like a good one. It took it. It sounded like it. Well, let me do one more because it, it's not oh. showing here. Oh, 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 Okay, my second. Gary, move Get back, back in. in. Back in. <laughs> One for the month. Oh. <laughs> I know, huh? Yeah, right? That's the longest photo Man, off we ever. Yeah. Recess in. What are we doing? That's what Christ said, too. Cameras are on, boys. It's always a blast. Thank you, Mike. Chance, good to see you. Hey, Chief. I'm going to be calling you. I saw you on Pine Needle today. What is that? I saw you on Pine Needle today. Why don't you? 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 Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five minute recess. Five minute recess. All right. So, uh,
Okay, we're back. And um, next thing is a skier. Uh, yeah, so I knew I was gonna. I knew I was gonna mix this up. Skid, steer, loader, lease. And I guess the lease needs to uh, have my signature on it. So um, this is something obviously that we have already been approved. Money's been appropriated. This is just formality. Um, the terms of the lease, I guess, are what what we expected. Uh, yes. No changes or anything like uh, that. Cheaper, actually. Actually, oh well, we want to hear cheaper. How much did we save? Do you know? To top um, your head? Per year, a few hundred dollars. Okay. But we've we've received a lot more attachments with it, so that's even better. Okay. So. Okay. So good. All right. So, any questions for uh, Peter on this particular item? It's just a matter of me signing a lease. So, just on a couple hundred dollars, it all adds up. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank That's right. you. You got more? And I move uh, that we approve. Authorize David to sign. Authorize uh, our chairman to sign the skid steer loader lease. Oh, he said that. Great. Second. Okay. All. Uh, any discussion on the motion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Public Works construction contract requires the approval of the chair to sign. This is for um, um, paving in town. Okay. Um, we sent the bids out back in July, or, or should I say before that in June, <coughs> and um, DNR paving was the low bid. Okay. So we just need to um, send the, the contract. They've signed the contract, and everything is to spec with the contract, so... In terms of pricing, has has Hot Top come down at all with oil prices or no? No, it's uh, sixty-seven ninety-five a ton installed right now. Okay. All right. I move that we authorize uh, our chairman to sign the Public Works construction contract. Uh, actually, you have, to, you have to be specific. Right? I think you're all going to sign it. You, so you're, uh, you're going to approve this approve. Approve. motion to approve the. I moved uh, contract. Motion to approve the Public Works Construction Contract. With was it with? Can we put the name? Is it DNR? Is that what it is? DNR paving. DNR paving. With, with DNR paving. There we go. Two hundred seventy-one thousand eight hundred dollars. For two hundred seventy-one thousand eight hundred dollars. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, we just have to sign them and get them in, right? Anything else, Peter? Did I miss anything? I think that was it, right? In terms of uh, possible, uh, am I here for West Street too? Uh, uh, no, he he signed the notice of okay. uh, proceed right that before the meeting. All right, Pete. Taken care of though. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Sorry to keep you so long. Nope, but not a problem. I, I enjoy I'm watching that tonight. stuff. Full slate tonight, so. As long, yeah, as, as, long as you're not involved, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. All right. Okay. Um, let's go right back up to new business. We've already, if you haven't signed the warrant already, although I... Wasn't out. Wasn't out, was it? No. There is Didn't no see. warrant. Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, keep in mind, we're going to have to come by either tomorrow or Wednesday to get the uh, warrant signed. Um, opening the annual town meeting warrant. From, uh, annual town meeting is going to be May 6th at 7 p.m. at the Middle High School. Mark your calendars. Um, so we need to open the warrant tonight. So I would entertain that motion if somebody wants to make it. So, Mr. Chair, I move that we open the annual town meeting warrant, which is town meeting scheduled for May 6, 2013, at 7 p.m. at the Middle High School. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mike, uh, I, it seems we're doing this a little bit early in time. Is this earlier than normal? Well, it's Feels the first earlier. time we've, last year the board <coughs> established a new, it is early. Right, because, uh, okay. because the board I'm... established a, a new policy uh, right. to open it up in, in, in January and uh, leave it open for approximately six weeks, I think, the, 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 the policy calls for, so we'll be closing at the end of February. Mm -hmm. Okay, just seemed early, but again, I just want everybody to understand that. All right, good. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. We, presentations. The first and second, I'm sorry on that. I made the motion. Seconded by uh, Mr. Smith. Could I ask a question, Mr. Chair, on yeah, the contracts? Absolutely. 
absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is a copy of the same one, Mike, because one looks like 2,700, 7,800, and one's 2,700. What one, one are you referring to, Gary? Uh, the, this uh, DNA paving. There's two different, there's two contracts as if like a, a copy. I think one's for the loader, isn't it? No. no. Uh, yeah, we've, got two, Did I... we've got two for DNA paving. It looks like two different prices on them. I, m I might have made a mistake. Uh, Pass them back before I, when I wrote those in. I think the seven could have been a one. I think that's a one, a one but just check. I think it, it, that's, I, yeah. I thought it looked the same, so take a look. Yeah, two seven one. Should there be seven one eight hundred? Yeah, it, there's just a little yeah. smudge that makes okay. it. Okay, and like there should be two of them. Yes, so okay. uh, one two executable copies, one okay. for us and one for the uh, okay, thank you. contractor. Did you yeah, that one looks, I, the one that looks like a seven? Fix that one that looks like a seven. That's the one I didn't sign. I think. I'm not sure. Let's see where that could be. Missing, uh, misinterpreter. Now I made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write, write it at the end. Yeah, write, write, write it down email. below when we get an issue with us or something. I mean, that's it. it. All right, so while, while Mike's working on that, yeah. Um, okay, so the uh, we received a thank you letter from the Mike Donahoe Memorial Road Race and uh, obviously a, a great event I actually this is the first time I attended this year my son run ran excuse me and uh, what a great day weather was great so uh, on behalf of the Mike Donahoe uh, Memorial Race Committee we would like to express our sincere appreciation for your support of the sixth annual Mike Donahoe 5k run walk which was held on October 21st 2012 well, we are very grateful to continued support and the many contributions from the town of Georgetown. <laughs> and we continue to experience great attendance at this event with over 800 registered runners and walkers this year. So, and the event raised over, uh, ra has raised over $200,000 since 2006. And they've uh, been able to award scholarships, again, $24,000 uh, uh, to date. So, a uh, great event and great job, and we appreciate the thank you. Um, the... MMA annual business meeting credential voting form. Mike, uh, quick question on that. Do we have to make you, appoint you as the voting member? You do. Okay. Unless so, everybody's planning on attending. Um, I'd love to get there, but it just this year is just not uh, feasible for me. But um, all right, so I, I would entertain a motion to appoint Mike as our voting member uh, for the annual business meeting with the uh, MMA. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Just so. uh, as a follow-up <coughs> to that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I did put in your individual mailboxes. I received some free passes from a vendor. Uh, yes. If you care to attend the trade show only, either Friday or Saturday, just present that uh, invitation at the uh, registration desk at the Heinz. Yep. It's uh, quite... Uh, interesting is uh, you know several you hundred vendors from you know from fire engines to software and mm -hmm. engineering firms and uh, you know uh, everything we utilize on a day-to-day -day basis uh, is 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 there no, do, I, the do I have to sign that Mike or no you can uh, I didn't see where there was a spot really for the date is 26th 26th okay. and 20, 25th and 26th. 26th. Okay. Friday and Saturday. No, we'll just, uh, you only sign it if I, uh, no, yeah, it needs a sign. There is a, yeah, a credential. The bottom? Yeah. No, in the middle there it says signature. Okay, next thing on our agenda is the to approve the um, Dr uh, Drumney, Roseanne, and Anderson, um, known as DRA, the DRA contract for the uh, Pembroke School uh, contract uh, for <clears throat> with them. Again, um, it's in your, your handout. You see that the value of the contract is $3,345,602. Um, I had the opportunity, along with Mike, 
and uh, another member of the um, school building committee, uh, Jeff, to go through this. Um, we did bounce it back to DRA and add, uh, ask them to uh, remove uh, the design development phase. Um, was originally higher than that. We asked for a $30,000 reduction. They went back to the subs and they uh, went ahead and um, granted that and knocked their contract down by $30,000. In terms of the value of this contract in proportion to the, to the uh, overall scope and budget of our project, um, in comparison to other schools, uh, comes in uh, from the average uh, uh, at, a, at a good clip. I think it was overall 8.82%, if I have the numbers correctly. Don't, don't quote me on the exact number, but it was in that range. And a lot of the projects um, that we looked at in comparison, scope and size, come in at the 9, 9 and a quarter in that range. So we, they come in at a, a, from a, uh, a comparative perspective. Uh, with a, with a uh, pretty aggressive pricing for the town of Georgetown. So we were com very comfortable with this as long as they that one category that they took $30,000 out. Um, and they did. And uh, we've come to um, this arrangement for three million three forty five six zero two, and that uh, covers the entire project in terms of the architects, subs, um, and so forth. They've already spent, <clears throat> we've already spent with them about 550000 which was to get through the feasibility study, of which we were reimbursed at 50%. Right, Mike? Do I have that right? Of that five, the overall project was, right, we would be reimbursed on that. Which project? The, uh, uh, the feasibility study piece, the 550, we were reimbursed by the state on that piece. The 720000 oh, Right. We ended up, yes, it was right. actually, it was... It was almost 54 percent right okay so a little bit more than half okay so uh, our role is to go ahead and approve this um, again it's been vetted through the school building committee again i was on this the actual subgroup i won't call it a committee but a subgroup of myself mike and jeff um and we went through this um a fairly uh, uh with, with our uh, project manager also um and um asked for some comparatives one to make sure that our project in terms of looking at the other comparable projects that it was, this was in line and actually was actually a little bit less again from a percentage perspective on some of the other projects we looked at there was one school that the the number was significantly lower um, but I guess it was more improvements rather than a than a, than a build so we kind of discounted that one but uh, most of them were in that nine to nine and a quarter range this came in around the eight from what I can remember of this is again going from my memory um, Right around that 8.8, 8.82. Am I in there, Mike? My, my number's pretty much. That's right, Dave. Yeah. So, uh, any questions on this? This okay. is. Yes, sir. Uh, what is this contract for? Uh, this is for the uh, overall architect, for uh, architect services uh, and design for the entire project. $48 million. You yeah, know. The project's $48 million. This is $3 million. Three million three forty five six zero two, which we'll give you after. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just asking. Isn't why? Why are you just? Why are you just signing? I mean, I'm curious. Why isn't this just being signed for just this amount, not as part of the whole contract? It's a sub. It's a uh, subcontract of the entire contract that we have to go ahead and approve. Really? And sign with the contract. Yeah, with is the architects. You, because you is this like the design level. Uh, the design it's level it's again feasibility schematic, which we've gone through. Design development phase, construction document phase, the bidding right. phase, construction Are phase. Can you do this for the whole project? Does each part get addressed? Uh, no. This oh. is a one. T this is it. One time with them. So this is. Yep. <laughs> I'll talk to you about it offline. Yeah. All right. If, if I. Yes, Mr. May, Mr. This, this is the architectural drawings that would start. I the whole process is that what this is yeah this is the yeah. DRA so this is, yeah it's, it's it's everything it's the bidding it's the whole project okay, okay. Is it, is everything right. okay. yep completion phase everything construction phase the bidding process the, the the construction document phase carries the most amount of money and, and the actual the whole contract is there um, again we've we've gone through it with a fine tooth comb with our project manager there too um, and who acted as kind of a liaison with us in DRA so um, again, this also is reviewed. It has to be reviewed by, uh, you know, the uh, the state too, also as part of our whole project. So, um, but it's all of it's everything. It's everything in terms of what DRA is going to provide for services from us, for us, rather. 
at this point. Uh, for the whole project, from what I understand. Right, Mike? Am I saying that incorrectly? But that's the whole project. Yeah, this, this that's is it. the last contract we'll sign with DRA. Right. Just like we had to sign one with them to do the feasibility study, this is to handle the rest of the project. Yeah, this is basically, that's why it's, uh, the Amendment 1 was for the, we had a, a, a full project budget that was approved by MSBA <laughs> and this board and the school committee and the school building committee, one bottom line number. And then uh, we had Amendment Number 1, which was for the 550602 And now this is Amendment 2 to that pro the, the project, and it's the balance uh, to get us to the full amount of the uh, of the project budget for design and construction services with DRA. Right. Yeah, so this doesn't drive the budget up. This is part of the overall budget. No, but it, 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 this is for Pembroke. I mean, we, yes. this doesn't take into any effect of what we're not so sure we'll have to do yet at the high school. No, this is Pembroke school only at this point. Yeah, there'll be a separate Sorry. contract yeah. for the feasibility study for the uh, um, high school, and we anticipate that uh, being approved or being invited into the project at the end of this month. But just a question, if that something like that got disapproved when it had to go to town meeting, would we be on the hook for this full amount if the state backed out? No, that's why they did it in, in separate amendments. We, we just did the, uh, the first chunk was for the feasibility study, and this never, we wouldn't have gone forward with this part portion of it, the design development, and uh, we were never on, happened. We were never on the hook for anything. If it was, didn't pass town meeting and it didn't pass the voters, we were never on the hook for anything other than the feasibility study, which, we, which did pass town meeting. So there was no, there was no uh, way that we would be exposed. All right, so any other discussion? Okay, so we need a motion to approve. So if somebody wants to go ahead and make the motion. I move that we approve the uh, Drummy, Rosane, Anderson Incorporated contracts. And authorizes the chairman to sign. And authorize uh, our chairman to sign. Amendment number two. Amendment number two. Great. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, motion carries. All right, so we have some appointments. Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman, before you go on, I, I, while we're talking about the school building project, uh, I had a meeting today with the, uh, our uh, owner's project managers, uh, Carol, Superintendent um, Jacobs and uh, the finance team, our town accountant, <coughs> our town treasurer, just uh, to because now we're officially in, moved into this the the main phase of the project. We we've, we've wrap we're wrapping up the 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 financial a aspects of the feasibility study and now we're moving into this design development development phase um, we have and, and I, I share that concern uh, that the workload for handling the billing process is going to far exceed our capacity as it stands right now um, basically we have one person the town accountant handles all the uh, billing procedures and that includes not only doing the warrant for it but we have to enter it into the MSBA ProPay system. We get assistance from our uh, owner's project man management team of uh, municipal building uh, but now that we're moving into this more aggressive stage and especially when we get into the contracting the construction phase, there's going to be a heck of a lot more bills. We're going to get bills from all the subs, although the owner's project manager will do his best to combine them, but 
they, it's still going to be a lot more work. Um, we talked with other towns that have uh, gone through this process and even the ones with multiple finance team members, uh, you know, the town of Tewksbury, for instance, they have three people in their finance office. They had to hire an additional clerk just to handle the building of their school. Um, I also spoke with our town auditor, uh, and she, it was her feeling as well that this was going to um, be too much for one person to handle. Uh, we originally, we, and the reason why Carol was brought into the, the discussion, back when the feasibility study started, we were going to uh, have uh, one of their financial people be the pro-pay backup person for Mary. Uh, that never happened because uh, that person went out on disability for the summer, and when she came back, uh, it, it, it didn't happen. It's going to happen. We still have to have somebody trained by MSBA to, to be able to do this. So Carol agreed that you know, we need to go through and have that backup person. But that's just a contingency if, you know, if God forbid, somebody gets hit by a bus. Um, it's not going to be able to take on any additional workload. Um, long story short, we feel uh, after discussions today that if we can get an extra 10 to 12 hours a month to assist in, in, in the uh, develop, you know, doing the warrant and the pro pay, uh, for the uh, project. Uh, right now, it might only be one or two hours a month, but when we get into the construction phase and then when they get into the uh, buying of the furniture and the technology, that's, that's when it's even going to be heavier than the construction phase. So we'll probably you know, use at least the 10 to 12 hours. That's our estimate right now. Um, then... Um, we can uh, fund this position out of contingencies that are already in the project. Uh, there's a $400,000 owner's contingency. Um, and um, so I wanted to bring this up and give, give the board a he heads up because we're also, obviously, uh, I need to talk to the school building committee about this as well, because they would have to recommend it first, and then you would be the ultimate deciders uh, on this. Um, but that's the situation we've found ourselves in. Okay. So what I would ex would ask then, why don't you issue a formal report to us and tell us what that cost would be, and you know, again, ten to whatever many hours they are, who that person is going to report to, and what the oversight is going to be, and then we can you know, take that document and then go to the school building committee and talk about it. So but thanks for the heads up. I mean, it's not that we have to decide tonight, but I think it would be, you know, um, important for us to have something in writing, you know, a detailed report, you know, nothing too crazy, but, you know, these are, this is the research you've done. Uh, these are the number of hours that you would anticipate for, you know, this January, for, you know, give us a timeline for the whole project and match it up, and then we'll see what the appropriation needs to be. I think that would be the way to go through it. Okay. All right. But that, nobody ever thought of that. We didn't even think of that. Uh, that would put an extra burden on our, our uh, payee people downstairs, our accounts payable side. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's good to you know, hear about this now so we can be proactive. But I think a formal report rather than just verbal, you know, something in writing uh, that gives us and layer it, like I said, layer it out month for month and let us know how many hours. And then we can take it to school building. And between us, FinCom, and school building, we can figure out how we want to fund that. But, you know, I, my first thought process is I'd be disappointed, you know, I, I, I would take it out of the project because that's what we voted Absolutely. and that's what it should yeah. take. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? there, should so there should be something in there. Should be a direct the only problem is right. it, it wouldn't be reimbursable. Right, and this is going to be, right. Okay. They, don't, they don't reimburse salaries. You understand. 
All right. Well, I mean, we have to stay within the scope. Well, we just saved thirty thousand on <laughs> on that price, so go. that might help. Easy go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the update, but Mike, I would say give us a report. And, and close. Okay. Um, ESCO update. Anything on that, Mike? Yeah, I think I included in your yep. package uh, a, a, a report that I got from the uh, APM builders. Uh, as you can see, the vast majority of the project is listed as 100% complete. Um, there's a, the, really the only uh, incompletes are part of the recommissioning. Um, you know, making sure everything is, is working properly. Uh, and the, the biggest deficit right now is uh, um, Air the, cool, the cooling tower. Um, uh, it's all hooked in and wired and ready to go, but they can't, uh, and they have to complete the fences. The, the, there'll be a, a fence on the front and then plantings in the back, um, and they'll be done in the in the, in June. Right. I mean, I was going to ask you about that because it just seems that it's close to the property line. You know, the setback. You know, how what were the setbacks on that? <laughs> it's kind of um, late now, and it's there already. But well, you know, we're going to do some type of sound mitigation. Or, well, that's you know. why the the fence yep. and and the the uh, trees in the back, bushes in the back, will absorb the. Right. Uh, the sound. Um, we do have the necessary, if there was a buffer law, we need it. Okay. But frankly, there isn't because it's not considered a building. There's no roof on it. All right. And it's, it's, it's like the, um, the, the um, building inspector well, worked with the, uh, so John's been involved in the process. I'm yeah, just concerned about the people living, you know, their house is right there, and I want to make sure, in terms of noise, that we're not uh, we're not being bad neighbors. Well, That's we have we have <laughs> noise mitigation planned, and and if if it doesn't do a good job, we, we we're going to have to, you know, right. step it up okay. a, another degree if it's necessary. Right. But uh, pool pumps, pump houses, things like well. That you can put that right up against your neighbor's mm -hmm. uh, fence or, 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 or lot line. There are no setbacks required. And that's the same. Mm -hmm. Why are they coming? A huge pool pump. Why are they coming back in June? Why not earlier than June, Mike? Uh, they, they feel we, they need some hot weather to, to really exercise yeah. it and test it out. I was going to ask when I was in earlier today. You maybe could have done it. Shot, you know? I was kidding with them at our uh, project. I saw them out there. Our, our project meeting. Uh, we, they could have done it over the weekend, but uh, they needed a little hotter yeah. than 50, 60 degrees. All right, very good. Um, we have some appointments to take care of. Um, request from Cultural Council. Anybody want to take a stab at that one? I move, uh, I move to appoint Emily Ann Hopkins to the Cultural Council uh, with the term to expire in June 30th, 2015. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, as far as the turf committee, I want to pass on that for tonight. Um, we have a, a multitude. I, I'd like to do those all together. Um, let me do a little more research on you know, uh, uh, people that are uh, wanting to serve on that committee. All right, license renewals. Who wants to take a stab at that? Can we do them all as one, Mike, or do we have to do them separately? Uh, they're all... Uh, no, you have to do them for each okay. um, restaurant. If, there, if a restaurant had multiple licenses, you can do, do them as one. Okay. in a group, but not for right. each. I, I move to uh, renew the common biddler license for Jimmy K's restaurant. Term to expire? The term to expire December 31st, 2013. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to renew the common biddler license 
for Arboule Incorporated DBA Sales Pizza with a term to expire December 31st, 2013. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Just I, I see a note here on that, that, that everything is paid yeah. up on all of these. I take it. Yes. Um, okay. Absolutely. Yep. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I move to renew the common vit vitaler license for Village Sub and Pizza with a term to expire December 31st, 2013. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, I think we're through our agenda. Any new business that we haven't covered? Okay. Uh, one quick thing, Mike. How are we doing on our lockdown procedure? Did a chance to get to start to look at that? Uh, yes, we, we called the uh, alarm company mm -hmm. um, and Janet set up an inter uh, a meeting with them. Okay. Right. And the, I don't know the date. All right. And the last thing, uh, Selectman Smith on the um, Seabrook. If you uh, got a call to them, just give us a two-minute. I, I did reach out to them via their website, uh, Next Era, I believe, is the uh, parent company. Mm -hmm. And um, I did get a return call, which was a voicemail, so I anticipate I should be able to have a conversation with them before our next meeting. And the thought process is to give them the opportunity to come in and uh, explain some of the, you know, some of the issues that uh, the other group had brought to us. Right, either respond in writing or come and see us. Come and see us. Right. Just give them the opportunity. All right, David, were you going to do this or not? Or next meeting? Uh, next meeting. Okay. Next meeting. Yep. All right. Are we um, all set to adjourn? Is there a tri board meeting tomorrow night? Um, no. No. Okay. No, there's a the wrong date. Yep. There's not no scheduled. FinCom, uh, Selectman, or anything tomorrow night. There's a workshop. There's a workshop. A workshop. Going on okay. that I, you know, I'm going to be going to, um, again, non-quorum, um, trying to get some some organization on the budget and get work through that process. So, All right. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Please don't leave. Uh, yeah, I, I'm still confused on signing these, Mike.